Here we are, 7-7. Seven, seven. I think there might be something going on today. A little uh, celebration of love. Allie and I are getting married, and uh, today's gonna be a great day. Great day. Allie and Kevin on 7-7. Seven, seven. Allie and I have a, a unique love story. Uh, two of our best friends, uh, her, one of her best friends, Erica, that she grew up with and went to school with, and my best friend that I work with, Sean, uh, two of them got married, and Allie and I met through them since uh, she grew up friends with Erica. And uh, it was on Erica's 30th birthday party that I kind of set my sights on Allie. Uh, but Allie thought I was annoying, so she really didn't want much to do with me uh, that night we were suing her. Um, it was her first time out in a while. Um, Finley was about a year old then, so she, uh, you know, she'd been home as a single mom for a year, and it was her first time out, and she uh, wanted to have a good time with her girlfriends, not have some annoying guy uh, hitting on her all night. Uh, but she did ironically tell me uh, during that night, and I thought I was being a gentleman, I was helping her out, she left her bag, uh, we were on a party bus, and uh, she kind of pointed at me and she said, I'm going to marry you one day. But uh, I don't think she meant it then, or really knew that. And then we didn't see each other again for you know over a year. She was living up in Connecticut, I was in Manhattan. And then at Sean and Erica's engagement party is when, uh, when we made out for the first time. And again, didn't see each other for pretty much a year after that because she was up in Connecticut and I was still living in the city as a, as a bachelor with uh, no direction. And then uh, at Sean and Erica's wedding, from then on, we, we started dating. And uh, I knew then that uh, it was something different, something different uh, that I felt for her. She'll joke and say that's because I never had a real girlfriend before, so that's why I never had any feelings like that. But, uh, but I still do. Uh, and now, uh, three years later, we're getting married today. We're, we're blessed with uh, two wonderful twins that are two and a half years old, and Finley, who's almost six. So uh, we did things a little bit backwards, but when we get there, you know, at the, the right destination uh, with love, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a special day. Today is my wedding day, um, July 7th, uh, 2018. And it was special because <clears throat> I always said when after I met Kevin that I wasn't, I didn't want a wedding, I wanted a marriage. And I'm really, really glad that I waited for that, to be in that, for that place in my life, to do all of this. Um, because although it's been overwhelming and not exactly the small affair I'd originally imagined, um, a celebration is definitely, definitely fitting to the situation. Our life and our family deserve this celebration, and um, it's been so beautiful. It's in my microphone, I'm doing a diary entry. It's been a long road to get here that I wouldn't change for the world because
You may be seated. <laughs> Welcome to Ali and Kevin's wedding. Now, before we begin, if anybody has the volume on their cell phone on, this would be a good time to turn it louder. <laughs> so we know who to blame. What better way to begin such a miraculous event than with a prayer for their happiness? Heavenly Father, in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with you. When you spoke those words, they held in them the power of creation, and all life began. Ali and Kevin come before us today to speak important words of their own, that through your grace shall be a precious new beginning in their lives. Bless them today and always, that they will forever see you and know you in their hearts and in their home. And bless us all who are here, that through Ali and Kevin, our own promises and connection to you and to one another shall be strengthened. This we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We are gathered here today in the sight of God to join Alexandra Emma Godfrey and Kevin Joseph Woods in holy matrimony. Through Ali and Kevin's time together, they have come to realize that their personal hopes, goals, and dreams are more attainable and more meaningful through the combined effort and mutual support provided in love, commitment, and family. And so they've decided to live together as husband and wife and children, as we say. <laughs> Today represents not only the joining of Ali and Kevin, but also of their family and friends. They like to especially recognize their parents on this occasion and offer their profound gratitude for all the love and care you have shown in raising them. Barbara and Peter, and Woody, Pat, and Jimmy, the unconditional gifts of love and support that you have continually offered have inspired them to become who they are today. And they want to thank you from the bottom of their hearts. For without you, this day would not be possible. They feel truly grateful to share this day with all of you, family and friends, for your love has sustained and inspired them. They thank you for your presence here today, for all the days it took to make today a reality, and for all the tomorrows they look forward to sharing with you. They'd like to especially thank those of you who made a considerable trip to be here today. As I understand, we have guests here from Korea, the UK, Arizona, Florida, Ohio, Pennsylvania, upstate New York, and Fairfield. <laughs> Yeah, all right, some came further than others. For our first reading, I'd like to call up Ali's college friend and sorority sister, Jamie, who will read Love Sonnet 17 by Pablo Neruda. love you as if you were the salt rose or topaz or arrow of carnations that propagate fire. I love you as certain dark things are to be loved, in secret, in between the shadow and the soul. I love you as the plant that never blooms but carries in itself the light of hidden flowers. Thanks to your love, a certain solid fragrance lives darkly in my body that has risen from the earth. I love you without knowing how or when or from where. I love you simply without problems or pride. I love you in this way because I do not know any other way of loving. In which there is no, but this, in which there was no I or you, so close that your hand upon my chest is my hand, so intimate that when I fall asleep, it is your eyes that close. Thank you, Jamie. And Levi. Now, true marriage is more than joining the bonds of marriage of two individuals. It is a union of two hearts. It lives in the love that you give each other and never grows old, but thrives on the joy of each new day. 
marriage is love. May you always be able to talk things over, to confide and comfort each other, to laugh with each other, to play with your children and drink rosé together, <laughs> perhaps at the same time, to eat at vivas together, and to share moments of quiet and peace when the day is done. May you be blessed with a lifetime of happiness and a home filled with warmth, understanding, and binge-watching The Bachelor. <laughs> Now the fact is, no ceremony can create your marriage. Right now Kevin's thinking, so what are we paying you for? Um, my point is that only you guys can do that. Through love, patience, dedication, perseverance, through talking and listening and trying to understand, through helping and supporting and believing in one another, through learning to forgive, learning to respect and appreciate your differences, and learning to make the important things matter and letting go of the rest. What the ceremony can do is to witness and affirm the choice you've made to begin a new life today as husband and wife. As I'm sure many of you know, though Allie thinks she met Kevin sometime in 2011 or 2012, they both agree they were definitely at Allie's good friend Erica's 30th birthday party. So thanks, Erica. <laughs> Kevin told me he tried his best to work his charm, and Allie told me she found him annoying. <laughs> the thing is, he was trying his best to flirt, even went to guns, as he said. But the fact is, Allie just wanted to have fun with her friends, owner for rare nights out alone. In spite of this, in a moment, in a moment, in a moment foretelling today, there we go, in a moment foretelling today, Kevin retrieved Allie's bag that she had left on the party bus, and upon receiving it and being struck by his kindness, she said, I'm going to marry you one day. She was also pretty drunk. <laughs> and she also never told him that she meant to leave that diaper bag on the bus. <laughs> they saw each other next at Erica and Sean's engagement party in March of 2014. So thanks, Sean and Erica. <laughs> There, Allie tried her best to steer clear of Kevin, and she was not only slightly embarrassed by her drunken escapades previously, but she found that he'd been in a boot cast for months, thanks to him wiping out on the stairs while trying to help her down the stairs. Because as mentioned, she was drunk. They didn't meet again until a full year later at Erica and Sean's wedding in St. Martin in May of 2015. Thanks again. <laughs> Though she tried to steer clear of him again, even involving friends to help, Ali and Kevin had a magnetic attraction that brought them together. Also, Carly, who was entrusted with the task of keeping them apart, was jet-lagged and fell asleep early. So, thanks, Carly. <laughs> they had their first date in New York two weeks later and have been together ever since. Kevin was enamored with Allie from the get-go. She was easygoing, he felt like he could be himself around her, and she laughed at his jokes. <laughs> Allie shared that once she stopped fighting it, she found that just being in Kevin's presence gave her feelings of safety, comfort, and joy. Allie and Kevin were engaged in August of 2016. Now, I think I know you guys pretty well, having met you about two weeks ago. Um, <laughs> but we did email back and forth and FaceTime, and I do think you guys have a good idea of what it'll take to make your marriage work. When I asked you the keys to your relationship, you mentioned supporting each other, communication, and being selfless and committed to each other's well-being. I'd say that keeping to those ideals will go a long ways towards making your marriage a long and a happy one. Kevin described Ali as dedicated to her family and loved ones. She goes out of her way to bring fun and joy into Kevin's and their children's lives. For example, how she makes sure that birthday holidays are special. Are special. <laughs> Setting up magical celebrations and writing love notes. Kevin also loves what a genuinely good person she is. She's caring, smart, and grounded. And Kevin couldn't imagine a better mother for their children. Thanks to Allie, Kevin is motivated to be a better man and to be more selfless to better care for and support her as she deserves it. Allie described Kevin as most importantly kind. Besides his kind eyes, he has a kind heart, mind, and soul to go with it. Every moment of every day, Kevin chooses the kindest treatment of others, and especially for Allie. Even when the kids are acting up, 
Ali's in a frazzled mommy mode, and he gets the short end of the stick. He still always, always remains kind to her. Kevin is also patient. Ali admits to having some difficulty managing time, but I guess you know about this. But Kevin never fails to be understanding and to make whatever adjustments he has to make, even a great inconvenience to himself, to help manage it. In addition, he is generous in every sense of the word. Yes, financially, but more than that, in time, in love, and in self. Seeing how he is makes Ali want to do better and be better for him. Now, I also asked for annoying qualities each has. <laughs> Ali said that Kevin can be a little rigid in his beliefs. Like, tacos must be eaten on Tuesday. <laughs> and I think egg noodles must be eaten with meatloaf. Is that right? Yeah. Kevin said that Ali crashes the car into the garage at least once a year. <laughs> now, I asked you guys what annoys you about each other, not because I'm nosy. So I'm here to tell you, there are going to be many annoyances, nuisances, and disagreements with the other that may even overshadow her car slash garage issues. You're going to get mad at each other. You're going to say things you want to take back. You'll both apologize at various points in arguments, realizing that you're wrong. But that's okay. Because that is the beauty of marriage. Because when over the years someone has seen you at your worst, and knows you with all of your strengths and flaws and yet still commits him or herself to you wholly, that is the consummate experience. To be loved but not known is comforting but superficial. To be known but not loved is our greatest fear. But to be fully known and truly loved is what we need more than anything. It liberates us from pretense, it humbles us out of self-righteousness, and it fortifies us any difficulties that life may throw at us. At this point, I'd like to call up Ali's sister Elizabeth, who will read from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but I have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. <laughs> it does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with truth. With truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I fought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I was a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, and I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now, faith, hope, and love abide these three. But the greatest of these, is love. Thank you. You know, as often as we hear this passage, I think it says everything there is to be said about the art of marriage so eloquently and concisely. Ali, Kevin, remember those words. And remember, it is your humanness that you love most in one another. And this has made you each so special that you have chosen to spend a lifetime exploring all the many wondrous qualities that God has given to each of you to forgive the mistakes that learning and growing means that each of you will make, knowing in your hearts that it is love that matters most. So, Kevin, will you tell Alexandra what is in your heart today? <laughs> uh, 
Alexandra. Today, obviously, we're getting married. Oh, that works. That works. <laughs> I always knew that I could love and I wanted to love, but it took 39 years to find the right woman to say those words to and to act that way too. And when I found you the third time, <laughs> the love just poured out of me and was not able to be held back. I was a bachelor in the city taking train rides all the way up here to Westport, Connecticut to see you. Typically I wouldn't go more than two blocks to get a kind of sandwich. <laughs> and since we both have a love of poetry, I would like to quote to you from New Jersey's greatest poet, Mr. John Bon Jovi. <laughs> he wrote some words about 30 years ago that it's almost as if he wrote them for me, waiting 30 years to say them to you. And he wrote, I'll be there for you. These five words, I swear to you. And when you breathe, I want to be the air for you. I'll be there for you. Alexandra? <laughs> Would you like to tell Kevin what is in your heart today? So I prepared something written if I lost my thoughts, and that is exactly what happened. <laughs> yes. Knowing that, um, well, first of all, I have to preface this, preface this by saying, 10 months ago, I was like, I know exactly what I'm going to say, and you have to figure out what you're going to say, and yada yada. And two days ago, he's like, no, 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 we are going to give each other an out if we didn't want to say our own vows, and you know, no questions asked. Days ago, he's like, I'm out, and I'm like, no, you're not out. <laughs> and then I was like, all right, he's out. <laughs> so I stopped preparing my, the end of my thing. And uh, then he called me, he called me this morning, and he was like, I did it, I got done. <laughs> okay. But I was already up here with anxiety and, you know, in the makeup chair. So I was brought back to what I originally wanted to say. <clears throat> which um, was actually on a piece of paper that I gave you when we first moved into our house. <clears throat> it's by Jack Kerouac. And he says, one day I will find the right words and they will be simple. We all know I'm never simple with my words. <laughs> I always have too many, too much, too often. But this has left me speechless. I wanted to read something that, um, sorry, <laughs> uh, something that um, can describe as best as, as I guess, <clears throat> something can that's not me talking for hours and hours and rambling on. <laughs> it's an excerpt from The Velveteen Rabbit by Marjorie Wilkins. It doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily, or have sharp edges, or who have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been lopped off, and your eyes drop out, and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all, because once you are real, you can't be ugly, except to people who don't understand. Thank you for understanding and for loving us anyway. <laughs> I thought you were going to quote Motley Crue. <laughs> <laughs> and so, do you, Kevin, take Alexandra to be your lawfully wedded wife from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, 
to love, respect, and support always and forever? Thank you. Do you, Alexandra, take heaven to be your lawfully wedded husband from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, to love, respect, and support always and forever? Thank you. Please, take each other's hands. These are the hands of your best friend holding yours on your wedding day as you promise to love each other today, tomorrow, and forever. These are the hands that will work alongside yours as together you build your future. They are the hands that will countless times wipe tears from your eyes, tears of sorrow and tears of joy. They are the hands that will give you support and encouragement to continue chasing down your dreams. They are the hands that will hold you tight as you struggle through difficult times and that will give you strength when you need it. And finally, these are the hands that no matter what is going on in your lives or the world around you, will always be reaching for yours. Here we have the rings, oh, rings right here. Now your rings are an external and visible sign of the internal and spiritual bond which unites your two hearts. May they serve as a seal of the vows you have made to one another today. May they always be for you your most treasured adornment, and may the love they symbolize be your most treasured possession. Kevin, can you please place the ring on Alexandra's finger and repeat after me. Alexandra, I give you this ring as a symbol and reminder. Alexandra? I give you this ring as a symbol and a reminder of my love for you and my commitment to our marriage. Of my love for you and my commitment to our marriage. I am honored to call you my wife. I am honored to call you my wife. Alexandra, please place your ring on Kevin's finger and repeat after me. Yes, sir. Kevin, I give you this ring as a symbol and reminder. Kevin, I give you this ring as a symbol and reminder of my love for you and my commitment to our marriage. Of my love for you and my commitment to our marriage. I am honored to call you my husband. I am honored to call you my husband. We will close the ceremony with an Irish blessing. May your mornings bring joy and your evenings bring peace. May your troubles grow few as your blessings increase. May the saddest day of your future be no worse than the happiest days of your past. May your hands be forever clasped in friendship and your hearts join forever in love. Your lives are very special. God has touched you in many ways. May his blessings rest upon you and fill your coming days. Amen. And now I can say, by the power vested in me by the state of Connecticut, you may update your Facebook relationship status. I pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss each other. First of all, I want to say congratulations to Ali and the Kev. Um, if it wasn't for moi, this whole day wouldn't have happened. Um, just kidding. Um, anyway, Sean and I feel uniquely blessed to have known you both individually and together and you two are a lovely couple and we couldn't be more happy for both of you and to see the wonderful life that you will lead together. We love you guys. You guys look incredible. Congratulations. And now to share their first dance as husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Kevin Woods. Oh, yeah. I met you in the dark, you let me out You made me feel as though I was now We danced the night away, we drank to much I held your hair back when you were throwing out And you smiled over your shoulder the minute I was stone cold sober, I pulled you closer to my chest. And you asked me 
to stay over. I said, I already told you, I think that you should get some rest. I knew I loved you when you'd never know. Cause I played it cool and I was scared of letting go. I knew I needed you, but I never showed. But I wanna stay with you until we pray you know. Just say you won't let go. Just say you won't let go. How do they look, everyone? And at this time, please help me welcome Finley, Braden, and Emerson to join in their special dance. Please give them a warm round of applause. I'll wake you up with some breakfast in bed. I'll bring you coffee with a kiss on your head. And I'll take the kids to school with them goodbye. I'll thank my lucky stars for the night. When you smile over your shoulder, for a minute I forget that I'm older. I want to dance with you right now. Beautiful as ever, and I swear that every day it gets better. You make me feel this way somehow. I'm so in love with you, and I hope you know. Darling, your love is more than worth its window. We've come so far, my dear. Look how we've grown. And I wanna stay with you until we may know. Gentlemen, thank you very, very much uh, for joining Barbara and I in uh, the celebration of Ali and Kevin's wedding. We appreciate uh, the distances you've come and the like. We'd like to welcome, welcome specially our new relatives, uh, um, uh, many from New Jersey, Pat, uh, Jimmy, Woody. Uh, we really appreciate uh, the, the wonderful chance to introduce you and to bring you into our family and vice versa. Thank you for, uh, uh, for, for letting us uh, join you and, you. Uh, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, on our side, we have the visitors from, from as far away as England. Uh, the UK Godfrey's have come from England, our, our, uh, our, our family from uh, Florida, the McAvenors. Uh, we have the Golachevskis from uh, Brooklyn, uh, uh, and uh, n nobody from as far away as Korea. That's uh, is the gentleman from Korea here. Could he stand and uh, take a bow? <laughs> and and uh, welcome also to our many. Uh, old and new friends that have uh, come from far and wide to join us to celebrate this uh, very special occasion. Uh, Alexandra. <laughs> Ali was a, a very special child. She's the youngest of our four daughters, 10 years younger than Catherine, uh, and eight years younger than the twins, Elizabeth and Christina. Uh, and when Ali came along in 1984, uh, it was like a whole second opportunity for Barbara and I uh, to try parenting all over again. Was she a mistake? <laughs> Strike one. <laughs> so, uh, uh, everyone adored Ali. She, uh, she was charming, well-behaved, well-spoken. Uh, and because of her relationship with her older sisters, wise beyond her years. And, uh, so, uh, but the sisters were growing up fast and moving on, and so Barbara and I developed a unique relationship with Ali, something akin to a only child. She came everywhere with us. Uh, she sat with us at every restaurant or dinner date that we uh, ever went on. Uh, she came armed with crayons and drawing paper and created magical uh, worlds of art 
for every occasion. And she made a big impression. Uh, we had a favorite restaurant in, uh, in Naples in Florida, uh, and after many years of going there, uh, they were demolishing the restaurant, and the bartender approached us and presented us with the entire collection of, of color pictures and drawings that Ali had given him over the years, which he had stored uh, underneath the cash register during all this time. And he commemorated our, the, the, the last of the restaurant with handing back the, uh, the artwork. Very special. Uh, of course, it wasn't always sweetness and light. Um, <laughs> Uh, Ali is a, a millennial, whatever that is. Um, uh, uh, well, her sisters were Generation Xs, and uh, my definition is that they were allowed to drink in the basement beer with the, the boys. Um, and uh, then suddenly, with the millennials, everything changed. In our case, we, we got a letter from the headmaster of, uh, of St. Luke's School saying that it was now wrong for underage children to drink. <laughs> and not only that, you could lose your home and uh, all your possessions uh, in lawsuits. Uh, this made a big impression on me. <laughs> so we, we cut to Ali's high school graduation party, 150 of Ali's closest underage friends. Uh, a, a tent in the backyard, a uh, little more modest than this one, um, uh, a DJ, a, a mandatory handoff of car keys at, uh, at the gate, uh, and absolutely no alcohol served to minors. In fact, we um, ingeniously had two separate lines so the minors couldn't acquire the alcohol. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> We even blocked the gate at the last minute with a truck to prevent escape. <laughs> oh, the other thing about millennials is uh, they came along with the idea of putting uh, water in clear plastic bottles. <laughs> who, who would have thought that water would become the biggest selling beverage in the United States at this point? I, I, I digress. Anyway, uh, it was pretty clear uh, I learned later that night that those plastic bottles could easily contain vodka <laughs> and, and nobody would be any the wiser. And as the sun came up in the morning, I realized that these kids had been drinking all night and were in, and far from sleeping it off, were in absolutely no condition to drive home. Luckily, uh, I had a genuine police breathalyzer kit. <laughs> be prepared. So I told the kids I would only let them leave when they could blow a zero on the machine. Now, you know that's almost impossible, right? <laughs> so it took some of those kids till 2 p.m. the following afternoon, <laughs> running around the garden before I would let them go. <laughs> and then in a blur, Ali, Ali grew up too. After Syracuse, and then to work in public relations, creative writing, and call center management. The qualities uh, she exhibited growing up as a child served her well uh, in, in her new burgeoning career. Now, Kevin, there, there was just one thing. Uh, I don't know if you already know this, and there have been indications that you do. Anyone knows about Ali is she has a particularly uh, strained relationship with time. <laughs> punct 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 punctuality, that is. Punctuality, right? So, um, by way of example, during the Maxim magazine years, any of the young gentlemen here remember Maxim? <laughs> for my sins, for my sins, I was a co-founder of Maxim magazine. So, uh, Ali... Uh, finagled her way at Syracuse into the Newhouse Journalism School for a course uh, based on the spurious notion that I would show up to lecture the students on the success of Maxim and the deeper meaning of uh, some of its content. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I, I purloined the uh, publisher and the editor and uh, told them we were going to fly up to Syracuse and we were going to uh, make a presentation. I called the professor and I said, um, give me an idea of what, uh, what uh, we're going to have. He said, well, it's mostly women in the, in the class. And being a boomer, my thought was, they're going to hang me. They're going to torch me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be Joan of Arc. No, no, he said, you're going to have 200 screaming girls all wanting to get a job with Maxim. <laughs> there was just one condition that I gave to Ali, and that is that she, she must turn up at least a half hour before the presentation. I said, look, this is your chance to shine. Your newfound celebrity uh, you should use to your best advantage. I promise, she said. Well, as, as the witching hour drew nigh, uh, the clock was ticking, the crowd was full of the screaming aforementioned young ladies. No sign of the celebrity starlet. So, as, as, the, as the moment 10 a.m. chimed, the door burst open and in comes in Russia's alley. And, and uh, I, I say to her later, what the hell happened? She said, I locked myself out of the dorm room. I, I said, well, couldn't, couldn't you come anyway? She said, what, naked or in my shower towel? <laughs> so, uh, on, on to more important matters. Uh, how did Kevin and Ali actually, this unusual couple, meet? Well. We heard a little earlier on, in fact, a lot more detail than I uh, wanted to know of how... <laughs> <laughs> but I think the, the pivotal moment was the uh, beautiful wedding on the island of St. Martin in the uh, North Caribbean Sea. What better opportunity could you ask for to, to start a romantic um, relationship? What could go wrong? <laughs> well, I embarked on my usual, well, with my usual paranoia, a due diligent process about St. Martin via Google search, I think in 2015, yeah, it was there, uh, and discovered that the mosquito-borne virus chikungunya <laughs> was prevalent on the island at the time. Uh, and I insisted that Ali take all the recommended precautions, including long-sleeved shirts, covered all the exposed skin, <laughs> lathering up with insect repellent and... Uh, secure mosquito nights at night to keep all the bugs away. I don't know which of these, uh, the, these remedies she missed out on, but no, none of it deterred Kevin the slider. <laughs> Measures were entirely useless. Anyway, thus it was that our lives would change forever. Uh, you must see my iPhone picture of Barbara's face when, Cal Kelly, when Kevin and Allie arrived here uh, one evening for a barbecue and we worked our way through the barbecue, you know, it did, the burgers took forever to cook and eventually we're all sitting down and Allie says, I have something to tell you and she imparts the fact that they're getting married and Barbara says, and I'm, I'm pregnant with twins. <laughs> Whoever said that twins are supposed to skip a generation? I don't know who that is. <laughs> anyway, uh, so what can I tell you about we've, uh, we, what we've learned about Kevin? Um, uh, certainly, I, I, I cannot add to the wonderful presentation last night that Jennifer made. Um, by the end of it, I was voting, yes, yes, let's get this wedding over and done with. Uh, but... Uh, I, I recorded, luckily, what she said, and I brought it back and compared it to my own notes, and, I, and so I wasn't far, far off. I must, might have got some of this from Ali, but uh, he's handsome, smart, very attentive, patient, even-keeled, and an extremely loving father with a wry sense of humor. Ah, I thought. I wanted to name him No Drama Obama. <laughs> But I quickly realized that that would be wrong. 
So let's just say uh, Paul Newman in uh, Cool Hand Luke might be better. Uh, Kevin has a steel trap mind uh, with a virtual photographic memory. In fact, I, I think I could strike virtual. Uh, he sticks to his principles in every way. To quote Kevin's sister, Jennifer, uh, he's a scratch golfer in the game of life. <laughs> Kevin, it's... So in a matter of two short years, um, uh, Kevin has made the switch from a single New York City stud <laughs> to a loving suburban father with three delightful young kids. So, so now my J Jimmy Kimmel moment. I, in loving memory, I must mention that Ali had a special bond with our beloved Fiona, Catherine's first child. Uh, the death of Fiona from a brain tumor affects how, mother, how Ali mothers her children each and every day. Uh, she refuses to allow even one magical moment with her kids to pass them by. Every day is a day for running through the sprinklers, eating popsicles, and searching for shooting stars. Bedtime will never get in the way of one more story. Her children are very lucky to have such a special mom. This hour last will go for one hour. Because payback's a bitch. So you have exactly 60 minutes of me talking up here. And even if you haven't uh, been part of one of Ali's famous speeches, um, my wedding, Catherine's wedding, St. Luke's graduation, I can't even believe you made it today without you know, it being an hour, which is amazing. Um, I'm sure you've all gotten a text from Ali at 3 in the morning, um, and it takes you about three cups of coffee in an hour to read. You have to scroll through it until your hand bleeds. Yeah, so you know what I'm talking about. I do. <laughs> right. Um, the first fifth grade at St. Luke's was a very special group of misfits. Most of us couldn't really hack it in the public school system. <laughs> And I think we were a crazy new experiment for St. Luke's. My very first memory of Allie and Erica was walking into the fifth grade classroom, and I feel like this was the first day of school, but it probably really wasn't. And they were trying to do their multiplication tables on their hands, and you would have thought the world was ending because they had no idea what was going on. And they were really trying to help each other through, but it was not working. Every one of us, though, was missing something, and I really think we needed each other to become whole. For those of you who didn't know Allie at the time, she was the sweetest, most lovable, innocent child you've ever met, and I was a complete jerk. <laughs> I had a chip on my shoulder for not being born a boy. I wore a backwards Yankee hat that Allie swears had food all over it, and my clothes were stained with dirt. <laughs> the first time Allie invited me over for a play date, Nez, my mother, called Barbara and said, are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> Barbara said I can handle it, but she does. She still does. Today. I don't know what Allie saw in me, but even at 10, she didn't have a judgmental bone in her body, and I'm so thankful that she accepted me into her world. Even though we have 60 minutes together today, I won't go year by year for 25 years, <laughs> like you did. <laughs> I'll just mention some highlights. I brought Allie to Nantucket at 11 after reading Judy Bloom's preteen novel, Summer Sisters. If you haven't read it, please do. Um, and we, in fact, became Summer Sisters. We even renamed ourselves Vixen and Cassandra, the two main characters from the book. And we spent our summers at the shack, a dilapidated turn-of-the-century wooden structure on Maya Comet Beach and one of the most special places on Earth. Every year, we'd celebrate Allie's birthday there. And it was never mine. <laughs> that was hers. <laughs> I don't know why that happened. Um, roasting marshmallows and singing loudly at the top of our lungs. Just last week, I was there with my husband and son, Bodie, and the only thing missing was you and Kevin and the three kids. I'm really looking forward to our next generation there. Many of you might not know this, but I was actually Allie's assistant for a while. <laughs> um, <laughs> This happened by Allie calling me out of the blue and asking if I wanted to listen to Filipinos for extra money on the phone and teach them how to speak English better. 
I like to make money, so I said yes. <laughs> and I spent the train to and from work every day listening to these phone calls that were in a recording and giving Allie my feedback. The next thing we knew, I was on a plane to Manila and we had like serious jobs in the BPO call center industry. <laughs> I really don't know how that happened, but I still do it today. It's my job. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. <laughs> so thank you, Peter and Adam. But part of uh, working for Allie was also managing Allie. So making sure she got out of her bed making sure she checked her voicemails, which back then her voicemail wasn't full. You're welcome. It is today. Um, I signed her up for her first two credit cards, which Kevin, I'm sincerely apologetic for. <laughs> Somewhere during this time, Catherine gave birth to Fiona, who was the goddess that we all obsessed over, a child who saw the bright side of everything and who very quickly became Allie's heart and soul. Every Instagram picture, Facebook post, story she told over the phone was of Fiona. Little did we know she would be practicing for her biggest role yet, that of being a mother. Allie always wanted four children, so Kevin, be careful tonight. <laughs> but the proudest I ever was of a mother, uh, as a friend was seeing her become a mom to Finley. Finley was such a special child and so much like her mom. And Allie, in the hardest, darkest time of her life when Fiona was sick, made sure that Finley saw, always saw the world as beautiful. It was so important to her that she got to experience every minute of being a happy kid, and I would watch my best friend day after day put a brave face on for her child. Allie, in every way, was made to be a mom, which I now understand is the toughest job on earth. So Kevin, when I first met Kevin, it was at Sean's house in Mount Snow, and he was the seventh wheel. There were three other couples, and I think Woods was sleeping on the floor of one of the other couples' bedrooms. I remember saying, who is this Woods guy? I'm like, Woods, he's always there. Like, he's at every single event. I'm like, Woods, Woods, Woods. So naturally, when Allie started dating Kevin after holding hands at Erica's wedding, um, I was like, what? Isn't he in love with Sean? <laughs> I don't understand. I don't think I was sure anyone could understand or appreciate the lovable whirlwind chaos that is Allie, but Kevin did right off the bat, so quickly, in fact, they had two kids right away. <laughs> Over the last two years, Allie and Kevin have raised twins in an apartment, bought a house, co-parented, planned a wedding. It may not have always been graceful, but it's more than I could do, and somehow they've done it while obviously being madly in love, as we all witnessed today. Kevin, you make my best friend so truly happy. I've never, ever, ever seen her this happy. And Allie, my summer sister, we've been through so much. I'm so excited for the years to come as we raise our families together. A toast to you guys. We love you.
Forever young At this time, we'd like to invite you all onto the dance floor to share in this beautiful moment with Ali and her father.